This is the talking. <laughs> talking. <laughs> That's not the first time I've done that, by the way. Calm well, down, son. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your eye on the ball. Eyeball. That's a joke, son. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Talking Archive. I'm Josh Jacobs, and we're again talking with Ed McKay. And uh, we last left off with him talking about how he met Charles Schultz, the creator of the Peanuts cartoons and comic strips, and uh, the special autograph he gave to Ed that wasn't just an autograph, but also a picture of Snoopy with playing hockey, pretty much. And um, Ed, thanks again for being with us. Oh, I'm glad to be here, Josh. Well, tell us about how you got your first job in radio. Um, you know what? I uh, I went to instant disc jockey school. That's what I call it. Mm -hmm. Back uh, uh, back in the, the late 70s, early 80s, there were several. Uh, Columbia. Mm -hmm. um, I, I went to what was called the KISS radio broadcast school. Now, back then... Kiss was, um, I believe, eleven fifty a.m. That's right. Uh huh. In 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 Los Angeles, um, and it was at the Playboy Building. That's where it was located mm. on Sunset Boulevard. And so uh, I signed up, paid you know, my fee, and spent thirteen weeks learning how to uh, be a disc jockey and 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 working in radio. And, and so when I graduated, uh, I ended up doing, frankly, disc jock, uh, dis, uh, discos mm -hmm. at, at uh, uh, restaurants, nightclubs. Uh, in fact, a, a, a partner of mine and I, we uh, uh, actually uh, uh, started many of the uh, restaurants. We'd go in two, three weeks at places like uh, Granny's Attic, uh, restaurants like that. And and uh, we'd set them up, and we'd work, and then we'd move on to the next restaurant. And at the same time, I ended up uh, getting hired at um, KNOB. Mm -hmm. And KNOB was a automated music station it was uh, elevator music beautiful music they called it mm -hmm. but basically elevator music <laughs> like kbig and kost were back then yes they were that's that's exactly right and so um I, i'd be there uh in the middle of the night changing um music reels because again it was all automated mm -hmm. and then from there i ended up uh, moving on to uh, a couple of other stations, uh, uh, KWIZ in Santa Ana, uh, back then was a big, uh, not quite top 40, but uh, middle of the road station, mm -hmm. and um, worked there for, for several years as a disc jockey, and, and then went to work um, there later on as a news anchor, mm. um, worked at... Uh, uh, several radio stations in uh, uh, Orange County, K uh, E Z Y. Oh wow! Uh, Kick FM, Kick FM. Merkif, yeah. That was the state. That that was the country station. Now it started out as K Orange, which again was another uh, automated, uh, uh, beautiful music type station. Uh, but then it became uh, one of the only you country stations in Southern California. Uh, back then, KLAC was mm -hmm. a big country station. Um, and then uh, uh, we were Kick FM. Yeah, and, and KLAC had, like, you know, Dick Haynes at the Reins was uh, Dick probably Haynes the most the popular. Oh, yeah. uh, not to be confused with singer Dick Hames with an M, who was uh, <laughs> Joanne Drew's <laughs> first husband. <laughs> and, and, and I grew up listening to these people. I, I grew up listening to uh, Dick Haynes, because my dad loved country music, and he and I uh, uh, worked together. I, I, as a child of you know, 12, 13 years old, I'd help my father. He was a carpet layer. Mm. And so uh, I'd go with him on jobs, and uh, you know, somebody had to pick up all the scraps and stuff. 
<laughs> In other words, and, he and, made and, you do the dirty work, right? <laughs> uh, yes, well, of course. And, 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 and he was, at one point, pretty much a carpet layer to the stars. Mm. He laid carpet uh, at Danny Thomas's house. Wow. Um, he laid carpet at Maurice Chevalier's house. I don't know if anybody remembers Maurice Chevalier. Um, and he... <laughs> He, 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 uh, the story, um, Henry Mancini was a, a, a very famous musician, mm -hmm. and he was laying carpet at Henry Mancini's house. Now, um, uh, my dad knew who Henry Mancini was, obviously, mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Mancini comes in while my dad's, you know, working, laying carpet for him, and uh, they get to talking, and my dad... <laughs> My dad asks Mr. Mancini, uh, what do you do for a living? Oh. And, and Mr. Mancini says, well, I'm a, I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. And my dad looks at him, gets a big grin on his face and says, really? Make something disappear. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, growing up, I got to... I, I, I got to I got to be in mansions. I got, I got to see houses with elevators. Who wow. has an elevator in their house? Oh, I got to, uh, uh, I got to uh, come down those banister rails on. <laughs> well, and, and 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 I had a great aunt and uncle, um, who lived uh, right near Third and Fairfax, where the farmers market was. Mm -hmm. And, and and still is, but it's you know changed. Yeah. And and uh, you know we go there, and, and back then you'd see you know film cameras. You you actually got to shop at the market. They had a grocery store. They had all kinds of uh, um, places to buy stuff. Uh, little kiosks, as we call them now. Um, and my my uh, great uncles. Uh, and his name was Kelowna. Mm. And my great uncle's brother was Jerry Kelowna. And Jerry Kelowna was a comedian that went on tour many times with Bob Hope. Wow. And, and one of his greatest lines was, Greetings, Gates. And, and he had a great big you know, mustache. I don't know if you remember him or not. No. But uh, I know who Gates was. <laughs> <laughs> it was his nephew. And, and, oh. and the family, you know, the, the family was big with thoroughbred horses. So uh, you'd see them at, uh, you know, Hollywood Park, uh, at uh, Santa Anita, um, uh, you know, during racing season. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I I come from a quite eclectic family. In fact, I'm looking him, him his information up. He was born in September 1904, died in November 1986. Uh, uh -huh. One named Gerardo Luigi Colonna. Um, That's, yeah. He also uh, voiced the March Hare in Disney's 1951 animated film Alice in Wonderland. That's correct. Yes. Wow. Yes. So yes. he's a Disney. He, he was. He was a well-known. Well, and Disney back then used, you know, well-known comedians. Um, uh, Ed Wynn, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 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 many. Uh, I got to work uh, when I was doing uh, radio and television commercials uh, as as uh, an announcer or, or voiceover artist, as we call it, uh, with Earl Ravenscroft. Oh, now, Tony the uh, Tiger. That, that's right. Earl was Tony the Tiger. He was, he was like nine feet tall. I got to tell you, he was <laughs> one of the tallest men I ever saw. He, wow! Um, and and uh, when I worked with him, um, it was later in his years. Uh, but uh, uh, he was just the nicest guy. And uh, I <laughs> once he passed, which was very sad. Um, he lived in Newport Beach, so we'd work together in studios in Newport Beach. Um, 
they all they they had casting for Tony the Tiger, and I think I was called three times to to uh, be Tony the Tiger. Wow! Uh, I never actually got the job, mm-hmm. but the audition, and it's uh, you know. They're great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they should have given it to you. <laughs> yeah, that was so much fun. I know uh, Thurl. Was, uh, I, 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 I really loved uh, Thurl. Uh, you'll know Thurl besides Tony and the Tiger. Um, if, if you're at, uh, well, he was a singer. Mm-hmm. He he sang uh, the song on on uh, the Grinch and Still Christmas. That's right, and he also sings uh, "Yo Ho Yo Ho," a Pirates Life for Me on Pirates of the Caribbean, and Grin and Grimmy Gross correct. loved to socialize on the Haunted Mansion, and, uh, and he was uh, he he was uh, the narrator on the train. That's right, and uh, he also did yeah. one of the Tiki Birds in the Enchanted Tiki Room, and also mm-hmm. one of the Tiki Gods outside as you're waiting for the for the show to begin. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And he, yeah, he did so many things. He, of course, he is a, a Disney legend. And there was a website oh, years yeah. ago called the Extinct Attractions Club where the proprietor of that uh, site interviewed a bunch of Disney legends. And Thurl Ravenscroft was one of them that he did interview. And so I think you can mm-hmm. find it on YouTube, which was just amazing how this guy got all these Disney legends who sadly are oh, oh. Not, not with us anymore. And, 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 and he was one of the original, as I recall. Uh, Kings of the Pioneers, um, which was a musical group, which included um, Roy Rogers, mm. um, and, and, and I can't remember who else. Um, and, and that was back in the fifties. Wow, that was back in the fifties. Uh, uh, but the, the, he he was very very well known for his singing, um, as well as you know the, all the voiceover. Uh, 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 things that we remember him for. Oh yeah, I remember he also was the announcer for for a long time for both the Glory of Christmas as well as the Glory of Easter at the uh, Crystal Cathedral that they used to put on every year. Oh, that and uh, in Laguna Beach, the uh, pageant of the masters. He was the the announcer every year at at, at that particular. Um, event. Now, uh, for those of you who, who may not remember or know, uh, Pageant of the Masters was a live production where uh, live actors uh, simulated uh, paintings and statues, and you could not tell that there were live people there. It was done so well, it looked like a painting. Wow. And uh, Thurl Ravenscroft would narrate the show. The show was like, I don't know, about a two hour show. Uh, uh, again, it, it, in, in Laguna Beach, it, uh, I think it's, they call it the Irvine Bowl, but I can't remember. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, 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 it's during the summer, um, and it still continues today. But uh, yeah, he was. And I remember, <laughs> I remember I was there uh, watching watching the program at one point. Uh, again, it's live. It's outside in, in uh, an amphitheater. And they did, um, it was, it was the, the Barnum and Bailey Circus was one of the uh, uh, posters, uh, uh, or something like that, that was depicted mm-hmm. on stage. And <laughs> Thurl, in his, you know, the way he did it, he said, it's the greatest show on earth. <laughs> and he got a standing ovation. It was, everybody knew it. Everybody knew it. Um, but, and, and if you ever get a chance to go see Patch and the Masters, you will not be disappointed. It is an amazing, an amazing production. Again, it's in Laguna Beach. It's usually uh, in the summer between, oh, I don't know, July and August, something like that. Hmm. Um, and and uh, uh, it's a live, live performance. 
and 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 they you know show you sometimes how they put it together. Uh, but anyway, I'm off track. I'm sorry. Oh, that's but, fine. Uh, I love uh, these conversations but, about. <laughs> I, I I think that uh, any of you who are listening would very much enjoy the production. There's a lot to it. Definitely. And um, we're talking with Ed McKay. This is the Talking Archive. My name is Josh Jacobs, and he's reminiscing about uh, getting to meet and uh, uh, work with Thurl Ravenscroft, the voice of Tony the Tiger and also a Disney legend. And uh, in so many productions, it would, it would take several hours to probably list everything that he <laughs> ever uh, he ever did in his 90-plus uh, years that he was here on Earth, Lord. And just, uh, you know, I, I, I remember back in, gosh, this was the late 80s, uh, K-Bright AM74 um, had the show called Mornings with Dan and Bob, uh, Dan Ruppel, mm-hmm. who eventually went to CBS as a producer working on The Price is Right and Late Show with David Lerner, uh-huh. and Bob Bennett, who is a uh, singer-songwriter. Uh, one morning they had Thrill Ravenscroft on as Tony and the Tiger. And so all these kids were calling up, hi, Tony, how's it going? And he's like, that's great. I, I, I don't think he said that, but it was just so, so cool. It was Christmas time. These kids were calling up talking to Tony the Tiger. And yeah. so <laughs> and oh, no, I, yes. did, I did not call in. I was 15 by that point. So it was a little too old for that, yeah. but <laughs> still mesmerized that uh, – you know, you just yeah, and uh, and, and, and actually, uh, another aside. Uh, 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 Thurl lived in Newport Beach. Mm-hmm. He lived in a uh, mobile home park, and a friend of mine who was a plumber uh, went and uh, uh, went to take care of a plumbing problem mm-hmm. at Thurl's coach, and for some reason he had to bring his grandkids with him. I don't remember the whole. Story, mm. but <laughs> <laughs> they were sitting. Thurl had cartoons on for them. Oh, cool! While my friend was working on the plumbing, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, they found out he was Tony the Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine at that age? You know, I'm meeting. Yeah. <laughs> but I was I was I was blessed to be able to work with and audition with him as as, as, as I auditioned uh, when I was doing voiceover with, with many people I I would audition against Gary Owens um, and and we all remember Gary you know beautiful downtown Burbank. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> even though there was more to it than that, um, he was very very. Very talented. Oh yeah, uh, you know you 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 don't know some of the uh, cartoon voices he did. Um, uh, so many, uh, and, and he was so so interesting on the air. I mean, mm-hmm. he was he was just fantastic. You know, all of a sudden he'd say, "I'm sitting here and enjoying my uh, the Congress sandwich." A what? Well, Dicondra's grass. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, what we're yeah. going to do is next time we'll talk more about Gary Owens because I've got some interesting stories to share about him, and Ed is, definitely does too. And uh, this is the Talking Archive. We'll talk to you soon.